wrap up session. My name is Ed Lazowska. I'm a faculty member at the University of Washington. Uh, along with Susan Graham, I have the honor of co chairing the Computing Community Consortium and also co chairing the uh, organizing committee for this terrific meeting today. And I'm going to begin our brief wrap up by the impossible job of trying to quickly summarize what we've heard and re what really was an extraordinary day. Uh, the past 20 years, the 20 years of the NIDR D program, have brought it back about a complete revolution in how we live, work, play, and discover. And that's a revolution that's due to advances in computer science and networking and information technology. In 1991, integrated circuits had 4 million transistors. Today they have 4 billion. Uh, in 1991, the internet, such as it was, had a million users. Today it has a billion users, both factors of 1,000. In 1991, 15% of families owned a personal computer. Today, everybody has a mobile phone. And uh, in the last quarter, more than half the people who bought a mobile phone bought a smartphone. That's the internet, the world, in your pocket. Uh, so smartphones, uh, e-commerce, electronic books, digital media, the web, the cloud, social networking, cloud sourcing, all of these are new in the past 20 years, and many of them are new in the past 10 years. So the, the pace of change is truly remarkable. Uh, as Jeanette Wing pointed out this morning, in addition to changing our lives, progress in computing, in computer science, in networking and information technology has driven our economy. And Eric Brynjolfsson spoke that, about that very compellingly. It's driven our economy through productivity growth and through growth in our ability to innovate. And this innovation takes place not just in what you think of as high-tech industries, but in what you may think of as low-tech industries. Right? We learned that disposable diapers are better today because of the engagement of computational rocket scientists. I'll take that quote back with me. By the way, I think uh, Tom Lang influenced Chuck Vest as well. I think this notion of an internet that is uh, both secure and open has a lot in common with a paper towel that's rugged but absorbent and tears easily at its perforations. <laughs> So today we heard a set of really spectacular talks, and these talks each describe both amazing progress and amazing promise for the future. We heard about human language technology, autonomous vehicles, sensors. Uh, we heard about privacy and security, software, scientific discovery, data-driven approaches to health, to science, to reasoning. And we heard that computer science and advances in computer science have extremely broad impact in an extremely broad role. The role in medicine is certainly electronic health records, but it's also evidence-based medicine and automated diagnosis and the complete instrumentation of your body so that your physician actually knows what's going on. Uh, in energy, advances in computing are certainly the high-performance computing that the Office of Science uses, but it's also sensors in the home, the smart home and smart building as the leaf node of the smart grid and the smart grid itself, the sorts of things that uh, EERE and the Department of Energy are concerned with. Uh, in transportation, we're going to have Jetsons robotic cars. I'm glad I live in Washington rather than California or Nevada, but they'll be here. But we also have stay-in-lane systems and adaptive cruise control, the sorts of things that will allow us to increase the density of highway occupancy, as Sebastian spoke about. Uh, we'll also have the sort of logistics support that make it possible to put Zipcar on steroids and increase the utilization of vehicles. Again, Sebastian also talked about that. Amortizing more effectively the environmental and economic cost of manufacturing them. Let me say a few words about uh, Vice President Gore's luncheon keynote. Uh, he talked about the role of technology in democracy and in civic discourse, and I think those were uh, among the many important points that he made. And here's the good news that he told us about. The Internet has demonstrated the power to play a key role in bringing about really disruptive change in the world. And the bad news that he also spoke about is we have a long way to go. The role of the Internet in lowering the barriers to entry to the public square, the public square where discourse takes place and people influence one another and decisions are made, uh, that role has just begun. The barrier is still very high, so there's much, much more that we have to do. Uh, and I think that's really a good summary of the day. The achievements of our field are absolutely enormous. They're mind-boggling. And, you know, it's not just the transistors are getting smaller. It's the intellectual effort that so many people put into taking advantage of that to change the world. And at the same time, the potential for the future 
and the need to realize that potential is greater than ever. We have to keep pushing forward. That brings me to the final point I want to make, and that's the NIDRD program itself. Uh, I was privileged a year ago to co-chair a, a working group of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology that assessed the state of the NIDRD program. Susan served on that uh, committee and uh, effectively co-chaired it along with me and David Shaw. And what this did really was to further deepen the already tremendous appreciation I had for the NIDRD program and the role that all the federal agencies play working together under NIDRD coordination to ensure that America is and remains the world leader in this critical field. Uh, the NIDRD investment truly is one of the best investments our nation has ever made and one of the best investments it can make for the future. So thank you all for all that you do and let me now turn it over to Susan Graham. So there are a lot of things that we learned today. We learned a lot about our discipline and the achievements we've made in the last 20 years and the exciting future. We also learned that we have enormous talent in this room in a variety of different ways. We learned that we have in our community spectacular speakers. And so on, I'd like us to thank all of the speakers that we heard today. A lot of things went on behind the scenes in order to make this, this day possible. And although it's in your, organ, your, your brochure, I want to point out the people who did a lot of the organization that allowed this to happen. The uh, symposium organizing committee, you saw most of them, but not all of them during the day. But so let me read out the names in addition to, to Ed and me. Andy Burnett, Vince Cerf, Erwin Gianchandani, Eric Grimson, Paul Messina, and Paul Nielsen. These people worked incredibly hard to figure out how to capture all of the diversity of our field in one day and how to find the speakers that would represent that, that diversity of, of intellectual contribution. We worked very closely with the night, members of the night of subcommittee who, uh, if you like, were the, the inside group working with, the, with respect to government, working with the outside group. And I want to particularly acknowledge Sita Ferlani, Robert Gold, Dan Hitchcock, and Susie Iacono. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to work together with all these people and we couldn't have done it without them. Um, I want to thank our corporate sponsors. We had contributions from Google, from Intel, and from Microsoft. Many of you who work in government know that there are certain things that uh, we can't pay for unless we have contributions, and we're very grateful to those companies for providing those contributions. And finally, I want to invite you all to go upstairs one floor. There's a reception. There'll be goodies there. And there's an agency showcase in which you can see more concretely some of the many things our community has done. Thank you very much.